we have an image based question here in which a radiograph is given and this radiograph is nothing but intra oral periapical radiograph covering central incisor lateral incisor and a portion of canine that is 21 22 and 23 region and the question is to identify the structure that is seen in the maxillary anterior periapical radiograph if we observe well we can find an ill defined periapical radiolucency or we can say it as diffuse periapical radiolucency present in relation to maxillary lateral incisor diffuse radiolucency present with respect to maxillary lateral incisor so what is this structure the options are lateral fossa genial tubercles zygomatic arch or zygomatic process of maxilla and maxillary sinus so the four options denotes the normal anatomical landmarks of the jaws therefore first we should be familiar about the normal landmarks that can be identified in a periapical radiograph and now we are going to focus mainly on the maxillary anterior iopa so in the first radiograph we can find a thin radiolucency thin radiolucent line between the two central incisors which are nothing but intermaxillary suture and the intermaxillary suture extends from the alveolar crest between the central incisors and superiorly up to a v shaped radio opaque structure so this v shaped radio opaque structure here is known as anterior nasal spine and the anterior nasal spine is followed superiorly by a radio opaque structure known as the nasal septum and on either side of the anterior nasal spine is the radio opaque structure which is known as the floor of nasal fossa or we can say it as floor of nasal aperture now moving on to the second radiograph here we can find a structure that is marked by white arrow on either side of the midline so this is nothing but naso palatine canal and apart from that in the same radiograph we can find a radio lucency on the top so this radio lucency is nothing but the nasal fossa it's very very important okay the lining of the nasal fossa is what we see as the radio opacity running on either side of the anterior nasal spine and now the second slide showing the different landmarks so here we can see a diffuse radio lucency between the two central incisors so this landmark is nothing but incisive foramen the size of the radio lucency is very important because incisive foramen is normally less than 6 mm in size but if the radio lucency is greater than 6 mm in size or some sources even mention as larger than 1 cm in size then we should consider nasopalatine duct cyst we should consider nasopalatine duct cyst therefore the size of the radio lucency is very important here and the second image second image shows an ill defined radio lucency or we can say diffuse radio lucency present in relation to maxillary lateral incisor so this image is similar to the one present or given in the question as well a diffuse radio lucency present in maxillary lateral incisor so this structure is nothing but the lateral fossa which is seen as a depression in the maxilla so this depression is what seen as a diffuse radio lucency and it is most often encountered in the maxillary lateral incisor and canine region so lateral fossa is also known as incisive fossa and such periapical radio lucency associated with a tooth can be mistaken for a periapical cyst so how do we differentiate periapical cyst from lateral fossa in case of periapical cyst we can find carious lesion in the coronal aspect okay radio lucency in the coronal aspect close to the pulp or involving the pulp with loss of lamina dura so this lamina dura is very very important okay if there is loss of lamina dura then it indicates a periapical pathology but if the lamina dura is intact so in this radiograph the lamina dura appears to be intact so in such case the radio lucency is nothing but the lateral fossa and apart from that periapical cyst appears to be well defined 
with corticated borders and shows equal expansion. So, these are some of the points which help us distinguish the periapical lesion from normal anatomical landmark that is the lateral fossa. And now moving on to the third image, here we can find an ill-defined radiolucency in the mandibular anterior region. So, this is the mandibular anterior IOPA. So, this radiolucency is nothing but mental fossa. And in the same radiograph, we can also find radio opaque structure. So, this radio opaque structure is nothing but genial tubercle. And in the center of genial tubercle, we can find a small radiolucency which denotes the lingual foramen. Lingual foramen. So, these are some of the additional landmarks that we can know. And next, getting on with one another important landmark related to canals. The first radiograph which is a maxillary occlusal view, here we can make out two well defined radiolucent structures known as nasopalatin canal. It is always found in association with the maxillary central incisors and here it is found on either side of the midline and it is confined to the anterior portion of the heart palate. Whereas when you look into the second image, again the maxillary occlusal radiograph, here we can find a well defined radiolucency, oval shaped radiolucency on either side and it is related to the posterior maxillary region and that landmark is nothing but nasolacrimal canal. So, both are different landmarks, we should never get confused between nasopalatine canals and nasolacrimal canal. Nasolacrimal canal and nasopalatine canals. Both the structures are well appreciated in the maxillary occlusal radiograph, but they can also be found in the periopical radiograph. As I have shown, the nasopalatine canal in the anterior IOPA, nasolacrimal canal can be found in the posterior IOPA of maxilla. And next, we are going to see some of the landmarks in the posterior maxilla. So, here the first image on the top shows the floor of maxillary sinus. And the second image again shows the floor of maxillary sinus in relation to the apices of the maxillary posteriors. But we have one another landmark here that is a thick radio opaque structure that is present marked with white arrows. So, this structure is nothing but the zygomatic process of the maxilla, zygomatic process of maxilla. And now moving on to the third image. So, it is showing the canine region. We have lateral incisor, canine and premolar region and two radio opaque structures are given. The first radio opaque structure is seen running from the anterior region which is nothing but the floor of nasal fossa. Whereas, we have one another radio opaque structure. Okay, So, you can see a radio opacity. It is running towards the posterior region. So, which is nothing but the floor of maxillary sinus. And this is the point of intersection of floor of nasal fossa and floor of maxillary sinus. And this particular intersection is encountered in canine IOPA, that is IOPA covering the maxillary canine region. And if you observe well, this intersection or the overlapping of the floor of nasal fossa and floor of maxillary sinus takes up an inverted Y shape. You can see an inverted Y shape because of which this landmark is given the name Y line of NS. It is known as Y line of NS. So, these are some of the important landmarks that we should know. And now getting back to the question, I have discussed about all the four landmarks given in the options. And in the given radiograph, we can find a diffuse radiolucency in the maxillary lateral incisor, which is nothing but the lateral fossa. And if you look into the given options, the other options, Option 2 says genial tubercles, so it is an anatomical landmark present in the mandible, specifically on the lingual aspect of the anterior mandible comes the genial tubercle, therefore it is not related to the maxillary anterior IOPA, so we can eliminate it on the first go. And option 3 states zygomatic arch, zygomatic process of maxilla, it is a landmark that is present in the posterior maxillary region that can be identified in posterior maxillary IOP. And option 4 states maxillary sinus, only the floor of maxillary sinus can be seen in IOP. And again, it is related to the maxillary posterior IOP. Therefore, out of the given 4 options, 
Option 1 lateral fossa denotes the depression present in the maxilla which is seen as a diffuse radiolucency involving the periapical region of maxillary lateral incisor. Therefore, the structure shown in the radiograph in the question is nothing but option 1 lateral fossa.